Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1980s. You mustn't play with the dead bodies. You've had your fun. Isn't it enough? Isn't killing five enough for one day? Seems like five would be enough, wouldn't it? It would be for me. For a weekday. Uh, yeah. I would be this bored after episode, four. <laughs> this is episode 208, recorded June 1st, 2022. Mm -hmm. First. Magazine. I am your host, Jeff Moore, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1980 and 1989. Each episode, my co-hosts, Bill Mulligan, Chad Hunt, and Crystal Cleveland, and I will tackle another classic or not-so-classic film from this radical, <laughs> gory, influential, and gruesome decade, and I think this film is described by all four of those words. That's just my yes. thing. Okay. Yep. So on this podcast, we start with uh, some basic details of the film we're covering, uh, and then uh, normally we do, uh, and then we do some first impressions. Then we kind of take off and see where it's going to take us. Um, That's what we do. But first, welcome to the group crew. Um, <laughs> first up is Crystal Cleveland, the Living Dead Girl, co-host of the Gruesome Magazine podcast. How you doing, Crystal? I'm. I'm fabulous. I actually was gonna try to find a doll like to be creepy with. During, but you I'm, seem like you're I in the forgot. you're in a uh, like a sea of black light posters or something. I know that's not what they are. <laughs> but, mm. Yeah, I'm like, what? what no, it's that totally guys? appropriate. She's got the red and the blue, some giallo going on there. It's very nice. Yeah, and I tried different colors. Like I played around with different colors, and these just work the best. There's a reason why they are. Mm-hmm. Yep. But they are. Also joining us is Chad Hunt, comic book artist and co-host of Decades of Horror, the 1970s and the classic era, and a comic book artist and writer. How you doing, Chad? I'm, I have a little heartburn. <laughs> I'm not feeling so good right here. Yeah. Mm. Not so much here. But so here. you guys, one of you guys call 911 if he starts throwing himself out of his chair. Um, just you know, oh boy, uh, <laughs> and move last on. But not least, nobody knows what I'm talking about. Last but not least, with Bill Mulligan, writer, director, special effects guru, co host of Decades of Horror of the 1970s, and he is an all around nice guy. Oh, thank you. He's oh, all here. We are and he's yeah. all nice around. Guy. I'm all over the place, and I try to be nice, you know? yeah. And it's that busy. Busy time of year. Yeah, school's ending, conventions are beginning, all kinds of projects brewing. Good times. Stuff Glad to, to have him back. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, spoiler alert, this movie came out 34 years ago. So, uh, so no yeah. letters about how we spoiled it for you. I was just about to go yeah. rent it. That's Man. right. That's right. Uh, so our topic today is Evil Dead Trap from 1988. It's a Japanese film directed by Toshihara Akita, written by Takashi Ishii. She, I, she, cast. Sure. I, I don't know what to do with double vowels. Yeah. Um, the cast includes Mayuki Ono, Yuji Homa, Hitomi Kobayashi, Aya Katsuragi. Masahiko Abi and Ariko Nakagawa. Dang, Jim. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's pretty good. You're I not, you're it. not Doc for sure. No, you're sure, <laughs> yeah. sure related yeah. to Doc. And, <laughs> but I, I have no doubt. I butchered the actual pronunciations of those doing English yeah. phonetically on those. But anyway, um, the production company is uh, a couple of. Uh, companies involved the director's company which was something that was started by a group of directors uh, but also japan home video which did mm -hmm. lots of anime and things like that we'll, we'll talk about what else they did in a minute mm -hmm. it was released on may 14th 1988 in japan no information i don't think i had any i, I might have had some information on dvd and stuff in the u.s but i'd be surprised if it wasn't uh released sooner than that um 
November 7th, 2000. It was released on DVD in the U.S. by Synapse Films or Synapse. Anyway, um, I wonder if it wasn't available till then. I'm not really sure. It was uh, available on the gray market for a long time. It was one of those ones oh, you can okay. only get at conventions. That makes sense. Okay. And, yeah. and they were probably really good copies, right? Oh, they were dreadful. Um, the budget... Uh, is estimated to be about 700,000. The Japanese title, Shirio Noana, Shirio Noana, Trap of the Dead Spirits. Hmm. Shirio Noana? Uh, <laughs> what's sure. that? You sure you know Wana? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> that's, that's what we do here make fun yeah. of other people's languages. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get any better, folks. The synopsis for this film, a late night TV presenter receives a snuff tape in which a woman is brutally killed. She decides to take a crew out to a location indicated in the tape, but only death and despair await them. Yep. That's yeah, that, that's yeah. what happens when you do things like that. And this is uh, uh, on this slide is uh, our killer who dresses in a, I guess, a rain slicker with some sort of camouflage netting over his face and gloves. Of... Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, in army boots, he clumps around. It really looks like they just slapped together whatever was lying around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, for $700,000, a lot happens in this movie. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's true. No, this movie looks pretty good. Let's just go straight to first impressions. <laughs> and this is Mr. Hunt's pick. So he gets to go first. Yay. Had oh, you seen yes. this before, Chad? And uh, what are your impressions? I have not seen this before. You hmm. hadn't? Oh, okay. I have, I have never seen this. I've heard of it. I heard of it, but it didn't. I fell for the old, ah, they're just trying to rip off the evil dead oh, yeah, kind no. of thing. So I wasn't really interested in watching it. Um, and I forget where I heard about the plot of it and someone talking about it, um, uh, some documentary or something. So that made me want to watch it. So, um, yeah, I, I saw this and I was pleasantly surprised. I, what could have been like a regular uh, slasher film sort of turned out to be a big time giallo slasher uh and, and, and it i normally i don't even like giallos but this was just like wow this is some really had really cool kills in it um really good special effects for such a low budget film i thought and um and then the creepiness at the end which mm -hmm. I, i'm sure we'll get into that it sort of blew my mind a little bit, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'll get it in this way, but uh, but I really, really, really enjoyed this. I, I really did. I thought it was fun to watch. Um, you know, it, it was just a, a fun, fun little slasher film with a little extra cheese at the end. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yep. Yeah, yeah, tasty cheese, right. Extra yeah. cheese, please. Come on, just right. Um, <laughs> all right. So let's hear from Crystal Cleveland next. Crystal, had you seen this before? Nope. I've never seen this movie either. And uh, I I started watching it and I was like, oh, I didn't realize it was subtitled. I was like, oof. I like subtitled movies. I just wasn't like, it, for some reason, when I go to watch the decades of our 80s i usually it's just you know i can like tune my brain out and i don't have to think much <laughs> mm -hmm. honestly but uh as i started watching i was like oh oh this is interesting this is like i guess like when we started seeing the effects i was really kind of shocked at well, for one, how much they had and how good it was. Like the eyeball, like they really mm. were trying to like show every in the way they cut the eye <laughs> going. I was like, ooh. Yeah. Um, so I really, really, really liked this movie a lot. I I liked a lot about this movie. I liked the story. I liked 
the actors. I liked the way it was shot. I liked a lot of the killing elements. I mean, when, <laughs> there's one where the, where the, I mean, it's kind of, it's pretty messed up, okay? Because it's, it's not funny. I don't know why I'm laughing, but it is, and this just shows how messed up I am. But this woman, like, it's, <laughs> gets like hung and drug over a car and then when she just falls i was like damn ow like it looked really yeah. good i they they had a lot of clever and creative kills they did some things that i feel like were kind of before its time i mean i yeah i was really shocked at how much i enjoyed this i mean i think that um i think that a lot of horror fans would find this interesting and fun it's not like a campy well, it does get kind of campy weird at the end. It's not quite basket case, but, you know. There, I don't think there, it was shooting to be camp, shooting for camp. No. It just ended up being camp. Yeah. At the end, at the mm -hmm. end. Yeah, it gets kind of weird. It's like, oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. It's kind of, it no, no. reminded it's me of a. It's full out weird. It's yeah. It's not just right. weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I loved it. So, yep, I had fun with it. I was really yeah, cool. glad that I watched it. And so Chad, yeah. this was a great pick. Mm -hmm. All right, then. Bill, uh, I guess I've got a longer <laughs> history with this than most of you. I, I actually went out and got one of those gray market videotapes back, back when it was videotape. And uh, I wasn't really impressed. And now I realize that was almost entirely because of the poor nature of this duped copy. It was grainy. It was kind of hard to tell what was going on. The dark scenes, the colors were more or less washed out. So to me, this is a great Giallo movie. Um, and, and apparently the director claims that he did not watch um, Argento movies and had not heard the soundtrack to Deep Red. And I believe the Japanese word I'm looking for is Lairashi, <laughs> which is bullshit. Um, no, there's no way. And we continue to make fun of other people's language. No, I'm not going to make fun of it. That's the absolutely, I may have mispronounced it, but my intentions were pure. Uh, of course, he should embrace it. This is one of the best Giallo films I've seen in a while, and it's so cool to see one, you know, this very Italian uh, style done by a different culture. I'm all for cultural appropriation. Mm -hmm. Send your letters to me if you don't like it, but I think it's awesome to see different cultures using things and putting it through their own filter. I thought it looked great. Mm -hmm. I It lost me at the end. Now that I can appreciate it, looking at a good copy, and the one on Amazon Prime is a good copy. It's still kind of a dark film, but it, it's very cool looking. I wish they just stuck with the, okay, I mean, it was, it was always implausible. It's one of those movies where the bad guy knows exactly what everyone's going to do, so you can have a trap there, and you have to walk right into it, and if you zigged instead of zagged, you wouldn't get caught. Eh, I, I accept that. I still don't exactly know what the villain was and why they were able to do what they did. And the ending makes not a lick of sense, even by Giallo's low, low standards of logic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this one, it, it, I, I just feel like they, they chickened out, like they felt they had to go supernatural. And it becomes more of a standard J horror where up to that point, it was different. Now, this is a fairly old film. So this is very influential in J horror. Uh, it wasn't ripping off the ring or the grudge or anything. This was the one that maybe greased the wheels to let those show up. So I think this is, this is a really interesting film. And uh, uh, thanks for picking it. I, I probably would have been reluctant to pick this one because, I, like I said, I, I didn't have the best experience watching it the first time. And it just goes to show you. If if the only your only exposure to films has been through less than official means, you got to be willing to give them a second shot yeah. because mm -hmm. what what you experience may not be uh, accurate portrayal of what the film is really like. Well, even uh, you know, like uh, a couple decades later, I don't know for sure when you saw it, but because we change, we we get maybe more oh. open minded or whatever, you know, so where we learn more about I... stuff. Maybe I think I'm exactly the same person I've always been, only more so. So, but I may be wrong. Yeah, no. yeah. I'm, a, I'm a lot bigger asshole than I used to be. Well, I, mm -hmm. I, I was an asshole to start with, and then I, I eased up a little, and then I decided screw it. Um, well, anyway, you've grown. Uh, mm -hmm. I love it. I love it, uh, Chad. I'm so glad you picked this up, uh, <laughs> or you picked this. The uh, I picked it up. I'm sorry. I had to do it. Uh, there is a Blu-ray out there. 
Um, it's not great quality, but mm. it's it's decent. And there's some a lot of con- there's like three different commentaries on it, which I didn't have. Oh, time that's to good. All of them. Uh, two of them are the director and the special effects person. Um, so that one will be interesting once I get time to do that. But uh, I absolutely love this, and you can't watch this without before you even start the movie. The background music, yeah, uh, to the to the title frame. You know the the interface is so much sounds like something from Goblin or mm-hmm. it sounds yeah. like Deep like, Red. <laughs> they changed uh, yeah, two yeah, notes or, or something. Yeah, and the and the all of the killings. You know the killings are so weird. I guess in my mind they could you could take any of those killings and just kind of stick it into mm-hmm. Suspiria and it would have fit, you know, yeah. they're just wacko. They make, oh, where did this stuff come from? So anyway, um, I loved it, but then, well, we'll talk about influences later, but, uh, and it's weird. It's almost like two movies in a way in that, like the first 40 minutes, what, five, six people are killed. If you count the video they get, um, hmm. Then her four companions and the other guy with the ball in his mouth, who is, I guess, the girl's boyfriend. Um, but, um, the and then from that point on, it's Nami versus the, right. the killer. guy whose name shall not be mentioned, I guess, the killer. Yeah. Uh, so there's like an hour of just those two facing off. Almost. Anyway, mm-hmm. I loved it. I love the colors. I love the music. I love the kills. Um, I love the thinking. I don't know what the thinking was behind it, but there was some crazy <laughs> stuff in there that makes no sense at all. You're right, Bill. Um, and I'm so okay let's, with let's, that. <clears throat> let's get on to some of that then. Well, that's um, one, the one thing about Jap- Japanese films, especially these kind of films, is they don't care if it makes sense or not. Yeah. Right. If it sounds cool and it sounds... Like it, they'll do it. They don't care. Yeah. Logic oh. goes out the window with a lot. Of, a lot and they're of and they're not slaves to continuity. So yeah. I know there's been yeah. Evil Dead Trap two, three, and probably and and it would oh, not really? shock me if they had literally nothing to do with each other, mm-hmm. set on different planets. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> set on different planets. Okay. Uh, well, let's throw up a a poster here. So this would be probably the Japanese poster, mm-hmm. which yeah. is. Uh, who is that with the in the white? I don't. Interesting. I don't know what. Sh- it looks like the that. Rai girl. And she's got her leg up in the air. I don't. I don't see, remember that yeah. in particular. Well, doesn't have to make any. But the scene on the top yeah, where the true. killers yeah, yeah. dragging yeah. bodies in. That's right. But They're also love not those the, posters. I, I love yeah, the posters. Those. Are great. Yeah, it is a great poster. And then. There's this one. Is that new? Is that a new poster? Because that looks like something. That well, they, I think they like put that on DVD the or something. DVD. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty standard. Unearth. Unearth. Yeah, it looks freaking amazing. It looks like someone just. It looks really hmm. modern. Really. Yeah. Just saying, like. And she's got oh, a leg up in the air. Oh, it was the chick. Again. It was the chick who got hung. That got drug over the top of the car. Yeah, oh, what I was that's talking really about. Okay, now oh. I get it. Yeah, now I get it. Right. Okay, that's thank you. Without the car, it was like, what sure. the heck? Yeah, yeah. She, she looks like she's pole she's dancing just, or something. Mm-hmm. She's yeah, doing the Monty odd. Python silly walk, yeah. It's weird, yeah. Now it makes perfect sense. Where was he that he was able to drop a noose right on her? Again, this, this guy's like, remember the movie Rambo? where there's that great scene where the guy's looking for Rambo and he's standing in front of this big wall of mud and all of a sudden yeah. an eye opens up on the wall of mud and it's Rambo. And you think, what if the guy didn't walk by the wall of mud? What if he went somewhere else? Rambo would still be there to this day waiting for someone to walk by. One of these days. One of these days someone's going to walk by. But no, he's everywhere he needs to be. He's always three steps ahead and he's got all his evil dead traps. So, so just to do a... Uh, uh a little more of a recap of what's going on when we talk about these characters. But Nami is a female, they call her a presenter, but like host of a like home video show where people send in their videos and it's late night. Um, And somebody sends her a snuff film. And uh, the beginning of the film shows 
the, the how to get there. You know, it shows the highway to drive on to get to this building. So they decide to go investigate it because they think it looks like somebody actually got killed. Yeah. So she and three. That's her, what you uh, would do as opposed to call the yeah. police. You would go right. there and investigate it. Because what a scoop we could get. Uh, yeah. She and three of her crewmates in uh, this condo who's supposed to be an assistant director, but doesn't. He doesn't seem mature enough to be responsible no. for anything. But anyway, uh they drive out there and they find it. So one of the things I found really confusing is two of the characters' names are really similar. And as best as I could tell, I think on the, unless I missed it, on the subtitles, they spelled them the same. Or hmm. if they didn't, I didn't catch hmm. it. But one of them is R-E-I and the other one is R-I-E. Oh, okay. On... Well, they both D I E, so yeah. who cares? And you know, the, yeah. these characters, except for the lead actress, these characters are also interchangeable, and they're just fodder. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. they're going to die. It's just I hope they die in an interesting, visually pleasing way. Yep, they do. Well, so here's although I, I, I was rooting, I was rooting for the girl. Here's okay. So here's one thing I don't like about Japanese horror movies. <sighs> rape scenes i mean rape scenes are supposed to be repellent and they're supposed to be unpleasant and they are in this movie and in most of the it's just they go on for too long and there's it's so predictable it's like how long before we get our rape scene like they almost felt like they had to put it in there and this one this one goes on for an uncomfortably long time but it, it did have the effect that i was rooting for her to get away i kept yelling at the screen put a thumb in his eye which is what i usually do in these things and you know she did fight back and then, you know, just when you think uh, she got away, she doesn't get away. Mm -hmm. It's the well, whole, but that was really confusing because they were having a full on conversation at yes. first. Yeah, there so, was a lot of exposition. In that, that was a scene. weird scene. I was like, it, what? Yeah. I was like, wait, what? What is going on here? And then, of course, she does say stop. But I'm like. Okay, that was so weird because they were talking. She was asking questions or something, and he, that was just weird. That that yeah. whole thing was weird. Okay, I was like, this is weird. I agree. I get it. And that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I was trying to figure out what's going. What's the relationship? Like, yeah, yeah. It was mm -hmm. hard to tell whether. I, I, and then I, obvi it language obvious language to use whether the but... rape was actually being consummated. Or yeah. Whatever, but the but the conversations yeah. did not indicate. No. Right. It was exposition it was just slash rape scene. Mm -hmm. weird. It was like they, they, oh, we've had too much exposition. We got to have something to keep their interest. Here comes the rape scene. Yeah. Meanwhile, he's going, that was my girlfriend. They got, they poked her eye out and everything. And then and while he's raping her. Yeah. 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 But if I kill you, then they might set me free. And then oh. she's like, how many other people are in here? Blah, 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 blah. And they're, they're it's, it's rape. Yeah. yeah. And then he's supposedly doing what he's supposed to do, but he still gets a uh, some some sort of a sword or knife or something through the back of his head out of his mouth. Yeah. I'm like. Yeah. From the guy who must be in a tree somewhere because his next thing is to lower a noose. Well. Well, he was possessed, yeah. so of, <laughs> of some sort. Well, I mean, that creature apparent obviously was supposed to be supernatural because yeah, it knew exactly guess, I, where she was. You know, it's like she's watching right now. So I guess if he can shoot fireballs out of his face, anything is possible. So like and I guess shut up and watch the movie. He can transfer it through touch. So I mean, there's. Oh, you know. see, you got way you you're able to get a lot more logic out of this than I did. I was just, I just look like a cartoon character with question marks coming out of my head. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, I. Again, I'm okay with that. I love Suspiria, and it doesn't make a lick of sense either. Yeah, so too. you know, you just well, gotta it, that's what it looked park like. your brain it, at the door. That the way that garrote or noose or whatever came flying around mm -hmm. or came swinging down looked um, looked like a wire hanger. Or, or <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, it was like he. I don't know. Yeah, it couldn't happen the way it looked. No, of course yeah. not. But who cares? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, who cares? But you're There's right. A lot of he stuff pulls her across the top of the car, and mm -hmm. then when she falls over head first, like they have a super yeah. loud, uh, that was rough. Foley yeah. sound mm -hmm. when he, she hits the pavement, it collapses. The, I wasn't the ready for that. Brutal. I was yeah. like, "Wow, okay, okay, okay." 
Yeah. They and Crystal, really and Crystal, or you were mentioning, I, I mean, that opening sequence where we see the knife sliding through the skin. Yeah, it looks good. And I'm, I'm like looking at my wife and like, well, this is disturbingly well done. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, <laughs> usually when they do stuff like that, you can say, well, here's where they su- here's where they substitute the sheep eyeball and here's some latex or silicon. And this is pretty early on. I, I don't believe they used real human bodies or anything, oh, no. but who, whoever mm-hmm. did the special effects did a stand up job on the simple mm-hmm. things like the cuts and. There's not that much fluid in an eyeball when it gets no, no, exactly. I was thinking about you though, Bill, because I think it was uh, one of the last episodes of '70s or '80s. You were talking about how your thing was eyes, yeah, and uh, Mm -hmm. you're always finding movies that have detached hands crawling along for Uh, Chad. Right. Here's 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 the thing about that, like scenes like that, where she's getting cut and she's getting her eyeball. At least in zombie, the zombies were holding her heads still as they uh, yeah. as pulled pulled her head toward the the splinter. And here she's struggling, and her oh, face yeah. is going all over the book. But when it's time to cut, she's absolutely still. Yeah, yeah. 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 When it's time yeah. to poke her in the eye, she's absolutely she freezes, still. Enough. Yeah, that is, that is funny. Uh, I found that hilarious. Well, I, I was like- I was thinking of me when I saw the scene where the blade hits her in the side of the face, and the blood is clearly coming from above her head. Uh, mm. Like, yeah, that's like, that's the kind of <laughs> screw up I would probably do. It's <laughs> so, pretty obvious. But... Oh, that scene there. That was the guy in the bottom that was the killer. Yeah. There he is. Uh, that's a nice, that's nice that, yellow and blue. That one on the top was crazy. Yeah. Just sharp rods just come I kept out thinking of, the, you know, the, you know, that board. magician's trick where they put the mm-hmm. woman in the box and they keep mm-hmm. throwing swords yeah. in there and everything. And it's like, yeah, this is what I'm afraid is going to happen if that trick ever goes wrong. Yeah. Just, well, there were there was parts where you can tell that she, her head was laying in this fake yeah yeah torso yeah, yeah. but it was still they went in so slowly mm-hmm. so methodically yeah. and and it was and just, you could yeah it's, uh, yeah it was tough to watch. Mm-hmm. So that's her killer in his uh, raincoat and. Yeah. I know what Wait, he did. Was, oh, there's. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Told... Lots of blues and yellows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lots of blues and yellows. Yeah. It's yeah, not I'm as not primary sure. color crazy as, say, Suspiria. Nothing is. So they're a little subdued, if you, if you can believe that. But the use of color is pretty good in this. Uh, yeah. Well, here's some more blue. Uh, I think we already. Uh, oh, that's, oh. that's the one you were talking about. Yeah. Um, so the she, girl with the crossbow. This, this, yeah. To your point on the last one, where when they were poking her eye and her, her, her Chad, and she all of a sudden mm-hmm. quits moving when they're poking her in the eye. Um, in this one, they had this uh, trap, which I'll kind of talk about here in a second, but um, that shoots the uh, crossbow, I guess, at her. And I'm thinking she's got enough head movement. I mean. Hmm. I I I, compl- I totally expected it to go right through her eye, just like the thing sure. in the video at the beginning. But she moved her head and it missed. So well, I, I think thought, that was the I, point I, of I, the like, trap. So when she came in, she would be the one to actually. Right, right. The point of so, the trap. <laughs> <laughs> but that that seemed really uh, giallo to me too, as how we. We sh- she's trying to get into that room, and then we see mm-hmm. a close up of the doorknob with this yeah. wire on it and the chair holding it in place. And then we follow this cable for like 15 feet. Oh my God. Yeah. The whole as it way goes right. through a pulley and yeah. over to, to the trigger of the, Very of the crossbow. Um, I also so like the occasional cool. black and white frenetic, you know, yes. crazy, crazy stuff. That That was a neat. That was neat too. Well, that seems sort of uh, prescient to ring, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, and and there's there's some really interesting little Japanese low budget movies. Um, uh, well, God, I cannot remember the life of the name. Electric Dragon Five Thousand was in black and white. There was Tetsuo, the original Tetsuo, the Iron Man had that which kind was of also thing. Also, a Japanese, uh, the same company, same production company. Oh, really? Hmm. I like it. So I mean, it was interesting to get that combination of that very harsh contrast, black and white, occasional effects, and then the more exotic colors. Which I thought was 
uh, one of the things they were trying to emulate Evil Dead a little bit uh, as the, the camera fast was camera, fast yeah. moving. Shaky cam. The, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah so if you take, one. take Evil Dead and Saw and kind of smash them together. Yeah, the first bolt misses her, and then uh, Nami walks in and trips the wire that um, machetes her or yeah. something. I don't, it doesn't really oh, kill her, though. Oh, no, that swings that giant mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. I don't know. She looked pretty dead to me. Yeah. Blood was coming from everywhere, like the ceiling. Just because she spit her um, gag ball out, I don't think that, that's uh, probably a reflex. But then there are there are other ones like we don't. Um, who was the one? So we've got the the pink sweater. That was the one in the car with the noose around her. Yeah. Oh, and then the other one. Yeah. Then she ends up after this one. After she stabbed like that. Later, we have her suspended at the end of a corridor, mm -hmm. and she comes mm, down a rail. The hallway, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sliding all the way down so she bangs against the wall. Yeah, I just want to say, of like... yeah, if you, if you shove a rubber ball in my mouth and put oh, me yeah. in a room where, you know, Crystal's like opening the door and I can tell that if she opens it much further, I'm going to get a crossbow in my throat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the ball's going to stop me from fully enunciating yeah. the calamity of my situation, but, mm -hmm. but I'd still be screaming, holy hell. Yeah. But no, she's just sitting there silently like her eyeballs being, sl you know, slit, so. I don't know. Logic. And we've got some shots here where she's... I almost wanted to put up... So anyway, yeah. The, the... These are just random shots. I had a hard time yeah. finding images that you could actually show um, from this movie. Yeah. I couldn't, you know... But well, there you yeah. see the difference yeah. in the blues and the yellow. There. Yeah. Some rooms were bathed in yellow and other areas were bathed in blue. A couple of them had, had them mixed up, mixed together. Crystal. Maybe there's some color code. I was looking at the photos like, Ooh, uh, uh, yeah, I was actually like thinking about the top photo. That's what she's in that room. I think that the actor dude was awesome. I loved him. Mm. Like he was kind of cute, kind of rock yeah. star looking, you know, and then was kind of, I don't know. I, I just like the, the movie. Sorry. I just, and I keep commenting shades. on this. Yeah, yeah. 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 The main dude. But yeah, but it, so there's a character that when they finally run into him, he just, he shows up in a doorway with one mm. leg, one foot on the door jam, lights a cigarette. Yeah. I, like, well, like he's been there the whole time. Cool. Like, yeah. yeah, he is. And cool. then, and then says basically cool. <laughs> nonsensical conversations. You know, he says yeah. really weird things. And they don't this think it's weird, but, but I think it's weird because I've got a rule in life. If if a movie is largely about a mysterious killer whose identity we don't know, if we are introduced to a character halfway through the movie, yeah, mm -hmm. it's him. It's totally <laughs> him. Come on, yep. please. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, so I want to talk about the endings in general because as I, I was looking back through this and I think I came up with like seven places that we could have actually ended the movie <laughs> that we yeah, would have gone. That's okay. Fair. That's an okay ending. And it's then the it just, return and of then the king of horror movies. And then something else happens. And then something else happens. Did you guys have any idea what was coming at the end? Yes. Bill probably did because it's. No, I have no idea what was happening at the end, even while I was watching it. Yeah. I was hoping, oh, here's another ending. Maybe this one will make sense. And it never did. I wasn't expecting Quato from Total Recall okay, to come fair, Okay, <laughs> fair yeah. enough. I was actually like, okay, well, I did believe that this was supernatural the whole time. I thought hmm. that there was something there. And then when he said, when, when, Hidaki or whatever said she's watching us then you obviously knew it was supernatural because he had no idea that she was in that room you know it's not like mm. he had a bunch of cameras around so I was like oh okay so there's definitely something supernatural but I wasn't sure if she could hear him it, mm. you know that wasn't clear if it was only the guy that could hear him or she could hear him because if you if you notice like she doesn't really she just says stop pretending you're two people but I don't know mm. that she could fully hear him if she could it have to be really quiet because he was inside well, they had of tapes him playing, you know that um yeah i don't know either uh but 
I mean, just if you haven't seen this movie, so spoiling the hell out of this, mm. he yeah. says he's looking for his brother, but he kind of knows already. His brother but, is like an undeveloped. Oh, no, I, I don't know. What in. if he gets well, out of him? How did he get inside of him? How could, how could he not? Maybe know it goes in and, well, oh, I think he, I don't think it was in him the, all the time. Hmm. Yeah, because okay. it was showing some scenes of of that vision, that black and white vision where the he's speeding through oh, okay. the you hallways and the, stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I thought that was I thought that was what is his name? Hideki or Hideki? Yeah. Hideki, Hideki uh, vision, yeah. 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 So Hideki I think vision. he I think he was actually able to go in and out. Now when hmm. he has when he comes out of him, I think that was just him being a being a butthead. You know, like he did. Little brother. <laughs> yeah. Well. You yeah. Know. So, yeah. and then he grabs him. I mean, so first off, we have where, uh, in terms of ending, he tells her that the, the semi-normal looking brother tells her to leave, and she escapes and gets as far as the gate. Oh, right? God, I know. This and is then so... sees the killer dragging these two bodies Oof. off in the distance. And she goes to the gate, and then she changes her mind and goes back. I would have been, I would have been a fine ending. She walks off down the road as we see him yeah. dragging bodies in the background. Um, would so have made too much she goes, sense. She goes back in, and this thing is uh, pops out of uh, the brother Hideki, and is chasing her, I guess. And she has the gun, and she shoots this propane tank. And it explodes, and you think, well, that's apparently the end of him. Sure. That could have been an ending. Then mm -hmm. the umbilical cord, apparently he's dragging an umbilical cord around while he does this, <laughs> drops down from the ceiling and is self-animating, wraps around her neck, and it starts yeah. to choke her. And uh, she gets, uh, I guess, the, the other brother... The, the, I keep calling them normal, but I don't know what else to call them. Uh, it's all relative. Kind of normal. The full-size yeah. brother uh, comes in and tears him away brother. from her, I guess. Shoves him back inside of himself, I think. Um, then stabs it. Yeah. And then stabs it. And then fire comes out of him. And why not? Burns up into a charred body. So there's an ending. Yeah. Right. Kind of explodes. Then when the charred body explodes at the end, when the, it falls out the then window. Then the charred that body could have been gets an up. Ending. Yeah, he gets up. The charred up body and gets up and attacks her. And then she pushes him out the window, falls down. They look down. There's pieces everywhere. Mm -hmm. oh. That so could have been an ending. Yeah, sure, absolutely. that's an ending for yeah. sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, then she's uh, in the hospital on. with the cop telling the cop that, uh, or the cop's telling her, they got, we couldn't find this guy you're describing anywhere you know what 30 centimeters a newborn baby right right <laughs> no not there we we He's a very very patient charred cop. body you know <laughs> anyone so, else would just be like you're babbling like a crazy person mm -hmm. yeah stop take more drugs so that's that could be an ending then sure they switch to her she's in the studio she's finishing up a show and you're thinking oh well she's she's back to her life but you kind of know there's going to be this little yeah thing that happens mm -hmm. uh uh and then she falls down and I don't know. It's like her womb starts on fire or something. <laughs> There's flashes in her stomach mm -hmm. and and her uh lady parts or something. And then this thing crawls out. Hmm. I just thought it, it goes, was her stomach. I thought it was mommy. just her stomach, but maybe I'm well crazy. it probably was, but there was a flash of sparks like under her skirt. Um, oh, okay. I, I, well, like the whole Hideki thing, like the, like out of nowhere, Hideki starts shooting bottle rockets at her or something. I don't, I don't know what the hell that yeah. stuff was. Was that supposed to the fire coming out? You know, God. <laughs> well, that's what you you don't know if he's an alien. You don't know. If yeah, he's he looks like an alien. So, yeah. yeah. What yeah. I would like to know is why is he killing everybody? Like what 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 happened to the mom? Why is he killing everybody? What I just want to know more background. I just want to know more. <laughs> I well, was like, he's evil and he likes to make dead traps. So you know. Okay. Ergo, well, title. Some, uh, no, he looked like an alien. Yeah. 
There's some neat connections there, though. So That's why they made the three, four, beginning. and five, and six. There's so <laughs> many probably <laughs> questions yeah. from them. Well, before she gets the video, we see some of that tape record, you know, the talking. Mm -hmm. you know, we hear that. And then mm -hmm. you hear somebody, they're watching her show, and you hear one of them says something about, she, doesn't she look like mom? Or something yes, like that. I, in the beginning, yeah, of course. Yeah, and I that totally missed that yeah. the first time through. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, so then later on, she's down there, and she, what does she look? Oh, she's looking at the pictures on the and wall. And she noticed it looked like her, and she said he thinks and I'm she's his mom. Looking at the yeah. yeah, she's looking at the pictures on the wall, and then there's a nice kind of camera pan swivel where she looks in the mirror and goes, oh, crap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. They think I'm the mom. Uh, there was a, there was a couple of neat shots like that, um, but they I thought he did a good job of sending you know of, of uh, what's the word I want delivering that information, getting you to realize it without giving you exposition. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, he saved I saved all that for the rape scenes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal? I I I get that, and I got all that, and I understood. I already understood that right away i knew why she was brought there because i were i was listening to the beginning yeah yeah i was like okay so she's like but it d doesn't it but it was me like she even says to her producer or whatever but it's but it's me it looks like me you know whatever the woman that they killed too in the video remember if yeah. you remember that she mentions that that woman right. also looks like her so apparently they just keep they specifically target women that looks like their mother, but we don't know why. Why does he hate his mom? What's his? That's like you hear the you hear them watching the videos, but all she's saying is, "I'm not going to cover for you missing school anymore." I mean, there's no reason that yeah, they right. have all this like hatred. So that's what I wish I had. That's the only part. Now, this is an '80s movie. I'm expecting a lot. Because this has way better and more of a story than most 80s movies combined, okay? So, like, I'm thrilled. But I actually liked the story so much that I wanted to know more. I was like, oh, I wonder, yeah, I was that involved. So now we need, okay. we need to watch the sequels. Maybe, maybe the sequels <laughs> build on this. I don't yeah. know. Maybe. I, I was just that ignore. involved, though, guys. I was like, well, why do you hate your mom so much? Come on. Give me more. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe I got too involved. I like. Well, it. we've got that. Know. There's that one picture on the wall where they, with the mother and the kid, and the mother's got little pins. Yeah. All over on the on the picture. Yeah, exactly. But we don't know. Like, yeah, you're right. We don't know why. Why are we trying to bring someone that looks like mother in and killing her? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although I guess I don't know. She raised her kids in an abandoned military facility or something. Or I don't know what that. Well. Uh, whatever still, that was maybe maybe she, she doesn't get mom of the year mug coffee mug or something but i mean didn't she didn't know she didn't seem she wasn't even yelling at him harley she was trying to just yeah. discipline hey you can't miss school she was trying to keep him in i don't know it's very it was yeah. very odd so, so this I, maybe were, there's something lost in translation yeah. I don't know. if this were an italian giallo movie we'd find out that like you know mom killed dad in front of the kid yeah. and blamed him and he's lived with this all his life and now he dresses up like her and well, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Lots of explanations. Mom, mom's her own here. sister or something. Mom's her own, uh, yeah. Ew, yeah. <laughs> so another another Jallo trope, maggots. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The maggots and on the I ceiling. Guess, I assume there was dead oh, bodies of like them, but we never see them, I guess. It's... There'll be maggots on the ceiling. <laughs> um, <laughs> These people, they go off to an abandoned warehouse because there might be a serial killer there. Good thinking maggots drop on your head i'm out of there a yeah. snake almost crawls up my skirt i'm out of there mm -hmm. a bunch of my friends get killed and i have a chance to hop over the fence i'm out of there i mean but no not them it's like i'm gonna see this through to the bitter end like mm, strong i still enemy. need to know if that snuff film was real or not <laughs> <laughs> i got my suspicions we, we uh so things that that i didn't get to like we uh, how did I guess somebody carried her up there, but there's a lot of these. You, you talked about it. Somebody mentioned continuity. Um, Nami and Kondo like run down these stairs that have collapsed apparently and fall down mm. to to levels below. But the next time we see her, she's on the roof mm. by herself. Um, and there's a, a really nice shot of 
smoke coming out of a, a little pipe and the yeah. moon in the background and a little water tire. Nice, really nicely composed shot, but we don't know how she got up there. No. Um, yeah. And then as she's walking along in the dark, she trips over Kondo's head, doesn't realize that's what it is. Oh, and yeah. then uh, um, the, the, the normal brother... I think he pulls out his magic cigarette lighter, right? And shows it to her. Does he have a flashlight this time? So that's another one. What's up with the cigarette lighter? Yeah. Why did she freak out about it? Maybe because it was hot and he didn't seem to. Yeah. But, but where, where are we going with that? What was the significance of the fact that he doesn't feel and, you know, doesn't, he has nerve damage. I was like, but it'd still burn your fingers, whether you felt it or not. If it no, got but, too hot. Maybe the little. No, no. There's, a, there's, there's people who don't heat. feel anything, and they've absolutely burned their entire hands. Right, right. It's but a that's thing. my point. So, As like. A, you, I would have thought his fingers would have. Well, apparently the little guy has fire powers, so maybe he's yeah, uh, yeah. immune yeah. to Protecting it? him somehow, yeah. Oh, okay, mm. fair enough. That's the fair. The little guy. The so little we don't little know how Kondo lost his head. We don't Quato Jr. Yeah. yeah. Quaid. Quaid. Yes, there we go. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait. You got to remember, you got to take a shot when we say Quaid. 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 I don't Quaid. have enough liquor in the house. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> Dallas is sitting there with them all staged, ready to. Go. Oh, yeah. Um, so, so there was, yeah, there is a, there's a little feeling of a basket case. There's a little feeling yeah. of video drone mm -hmm. with this snuff film mm -hmm. that weirdness there's uh communion tons and tons and tons <laughs> of jello i mean maggots yeah and the eye and... and all of it mm -hmm. i still the music yeah. but the music the yeah, music totally. oh my god i love the music i thought that was great mm. i you'd think that would get annoying but it didn't annoy me i just no, it was pretty good music um, probably because it reminded me so much of goblin <laughs> yeah right <laughs> right so what else? I know there's a couple other things here to. There's lots of water. It's wet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's wet. I, I I don't know what that means, but it's out of Japanese it's a, it's trope. Just a, there's a lot of movies. It's a strange little film. There was yeah. the howl, the howling, sort of a howling type ending with the. Oh. When yeah. Dee Wallace was on TV, and then she started. Now, what year did this come out? Eighty-eight. Eighty-eight. So this is pretty late eighties. Mm-hmm. There's there's a lot of off kilter camera angles, um, mm -hmm. but then when she climbs down that trap door or that grate or something to a lower level, the camera's turned completely sideways. It looks like mm. she's sitting up. Um, it, it's weird looking, like she's climbing sideways instead of climbing down. Mm. <laughs> Crazy there's stuff. There's no taglines. Some... Oh yeah, no taglines. So nope. we Chad didn't get his moment. So this is kind of. Sad, actually. Yeah, <laughs> I'm all broken up about it. He loves the tag. I know he loves his it. Thing. So the first um, death, which was I don't know how you pronounce it, Reese Sugiura was the cap the the character's name. Hatomi Kobayashi. Kobayashi. Was a <laughs> Japanese adult film star. Hmm. And oh. Japanese home video also produced adult videos under the name Alice Japan. Hmm. And so this was supposed to be a vehicle for her to star in a sort of a normal movie. But the director kind of went, yeah, <laughs> nah, I don't so know much. if she's that good of an actress or not. So she ends up being like uh, having the only sex scene in the film, I guess, which is very oh, yeah. know, weird, yeah. too. Kondo, who apparently couldn't perform the night before or a couple of days before, now says, I'm up for it now. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> to coin a phrase. Kondo, Kondo and Re had sex in that weird ass building. But they didn't did they actually have sex? Is that what you're saying? Oh. You're saying it actually happened or something? I don't understand. Oh, I don't think they did. Oh, okay. You know, oh, I, I hope I didn't not. understand. Okay. God, the STDs yeah, I, I, that you would get. And then when it's over, it's like, are my clothes dirty? Your, your clothes need to be burned. Are you kidding? <laughs> oh, my God. I yeah. can't think of a worse place to have sex. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. yeah. The, uh... Everyone's going to know what we did. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> 
So the special effects manager was uh, somebody named Shinichi Wakasa. Wakasa. It was good. Uh, I didn't get a chance to look up on what else to, he did. Ah, so well, you're gonna tell me. It says he went on to do uh, monster suits. Oh, God, Godzilla. Oh, wow. Then. Oh, cool. Well, good for him. Monster suit mm-hmm. maker for several Godzilla films. Excellent. Um, and so that these these are people. The cinematographer, Masaki Tamura, also did Lady Snowblood. I don't know if you've oh, seen that. Oh, that's a good movie. Not, yes, that's a fun it's movie. very much like Kill Bill type yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, Tarantino uh, watched excellent. that on replay. Yeah. Uh, and then the voice of Hideki, Mari Shimizu. Shimizu? Mm-hmm. Uh, also as the voice of Adam in Astro Boy. <laughs> oh, okay. She did a lot of she did a lot of stuff, but yeah. that's the only one I didn't watch any of that stuff except when I was uh like in junior high, I think maybe maybe late elementary school, Astro Boy was on every morning at like oh, yeah. six thirty AM or something before you went to school. Crazy stuff. Astro Boy. And then you find out there's only thirty episodes of it. So every six weeks they started all over again. <laughs> the 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 guy who did Astro Boy is was like the Walt Disney of Japan. I mean Miyazaki's yeah. the one that gets all the attention now, but and I I can't even remember his name. That's how sad it is. But he did a lot of great stuff. Kimba the White Lion was another one that got shown here. Mm-hmm. That was his. Um, limited animation, but a lot of energy and very cool stuff. Hmm. So there's you know it's possible. I think it's possible that maybe the director hadn't seen that stuff, but the cinematographer, you know, and the, the guy that wrote the music and the, I don't know. This is my skeptical face. I saw that. I caught that. Mm. <laughs> and, and you know, and I, I don't see, I don't, I don't see any reason to, to even claim to that because it. there's, there's yeah. nothing wrong with, um, I mean, this is when Argento was firing on all cylinders. Mm-hmm. If, if you come to me and said, I'm going to wave a magic wand and make you as good as any director you want, I would have said Mario Bava. But Argento would have definitely been in the top five, you know? So nothing wrong with that. He, I think this is a, if I had to make a list of great Giallo movies, this would be in my top 10. Yeah. 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 No, I thought, I, I thought this was brilliant. So um, I guess I left that picture up there for a while. Yeah. No, um, so I don't know some of these some of the characters. I don't know who they were. I don't know what their names were. They didn't really call them a name. So right, they didn't linger. Uh, you know, to tell you the truth, Crystal's background is also in my top ten Giallo. Yeah. Ah, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's fun. David loved that Crystal. Oh. Yeah, he hasn't seen it yet. He if you just see a, if you just add a dome light. Oh, yeah. God. I'm with him on that, though. I cannot stand, he can't stand what, like, when they're doing cars and they use the dome light, you know, in the cars to add light. I can't stand it either because no one drives or uses the dome light like that. Come on. Yeah. I'm with him. It just takes you out of it. It's like, no, no, no. One of those things he notices every time. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, let's let's do some final Mm -hmm. thoughts. Chad, you got. You know anything you want to? I got a few. Add about this? Oh, no, not not anything interesting. But oh well. <laughs> well that's no, not no. Me, uh... Uh, this is was this was a very this was a pleasant surprise. Um, I went in not expecting a whole lot and ended up really enjoying it. Um, and the and I kind of I know the a lot of the ending of it ending gets bashed a lot people didn't like the ending the original ending but if you take a look at the overall film it just it didn't it wasn't that odd (laughs) to me for something like that to happen in 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 a movie like this um you know with this little creature and everything so the little guy so um but yeah it's um I'm glad we watched it and I'm glad I finally got to see it and I'm glad we covered it. And, and, and I really liked hearing you guys uh, takes on everything. So yeah, I, I really, I recommend it. You know, if anybody out there was wondering about it and have, have, has not seen it. Uh, yeah. Give it a shot. It's on prime and uh, it's a pretty good copy, I think on, on prime. Um, so yeah, it's a uh, pretty good all around. I liked it. 
It's like Bill. It's an all around nice movie. Yay. <laughs> uh, mm. Yikes. Uh, nobody called it nice That's before a good Crystal. Thing, though. Yeah. Final thought. It's so nice. Uh, <laughs> I I love this movie and I do I agree. I think everyone should should watch it. I mean, it's a man. It's like okay, I get it. It gets a little weird at the end, but I agree with Chad. I I was totally in and I totally was like, "Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah." It seemed very serious up to that point, and I think that they were trying to do serious, and it was a little serious, and it still looks good, but it's just so out so far in left yeah, field. Yeah. That's what makes it a little off the wall, and I was in for it. I don't know. I got to tell you, I I am so glad I watched this movie. I'm, I, do, I would be interested in checking out the rest of them, but I bet you they're not. You know how sequels mm. are. Eh. Mm-hmm. One of them is supposed mm-hmm. to be pretty good. I can't remember if it's three. I think it might be two, but I'm not sure. Two? Well, yeah. I guess I might have to find out. What? 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 Yep. what? <laughs> All right, Bill, how about you? Final thoughts on this one? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely worth watching if you, if you, unless you're just one of those people who can't watch subtitle movies or just too bad because you're missing a lot of good stuff. Definitely worth watching. I'm one of the people who doesn't like the ending. I would have been happy at ending one, two, or three. <laughs> um, so you know, it just it just kept going until it got totally crazy. But you know, a lot of people like that crazy. Some people probably think that's the greatest ending ever. So definitely worth seeking out. And yeah, I'm I'm with Crystal. I I have an itch to uh, check out number two and number three and see where they went with this. Hmm. All right, um, I'm with you and thank you again chad i'm so glad you picked this because i'm not sure i had never heard of this apparently it's oh wow has a reputation but i had never heard of it until you picked it and then i started reading up on it and uh so i went ahead and got the blu-ray to hear some commentary and stuff so i'm looking forward to digging into that mm-hmm. i loved it i think it's like it's it's almost it's chaotically brilliant in a mm-hmm. way i mean um yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense in a lot of parts, but I loved it. <laughs> and actually, as that last hour of the film went on with the interaction between Nami and the brothers, where else was it? Once once that guy showed up, I knew when that, when when she started sparking in the in the television studio, I knew that thing when they showed a close up of its face. You could, mm-hmm. I'm sure you guys did too. You know, yeah. I just thought, mommy. That's, <laughs> gonna say it he's gonna say it all right uh so yeah check this out um, that was a little humanoids from the deep too yeah oh, yeah yeah know. yeah yep. um so did we that was on prime right yeah mm-hmm. yep yep okay so check it out on prime right now uh as we're recording we have an absolute Tons. ton of feedback oh wonderful ton Yay. Of feedback so we'll That's see awesome. how much we get through here uh, and I'm going to have, first one is on uh, Cannibal Holocaust, Ruh-roh. episode 178, and I'm going to read this one. Yay. It's because from Tyler Moore, no relation. Uh, uh, <laughs> is it really no Hello, relation? Decades of Horror. Okay. As a lifelong horror fan, I try to watch a variety of films. I have always had an inner voice guiding me along when exploring horror movies. I was never a gore hound, and I knew by reputation to never watch Cannibal Holocaust. I've read so many cautionary warnings about this movie that I decided to never watch it. I did not like the idea of the animal cruelty and thought the gore would be extremely realistic. It's not the idea of cannibals that bothered me, but the intensity of the film itself. I have always enjoyed a good zombie movie, but this movie, this film was different. It was going to never be seen, or so I thought. Uh oh. Uh, yeah, well. Your uh, episode 178, um, and I, uh, I saw your episode 178, and I enjoyed your discussion of it. I liked hearing the history of the film and everyone's individual reactions to it. You all were thorough in discussing the animal cruelty. It was nice to hear they at least ate them all. Yeah. It's a small mm-hmm. consolation, but mm-hmm. it helps. The opinion that everyone should watch it once cracked the door of my curiosity. 
I let this thought fester for a few months. That's good choice of words. <laughs> That's fester. Me laugh, yeah. Thank God for nice. our crafty scheme. Uh, yeah. um, I finally took the plunge and watched it. I place all the blame squarely on you guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, Joe yeah. Bob helped it go down a bit easier. I can finally yeah. say I have seen it, and what a wild ride! That poor turtle. You were not kidding about having no idea about the anatomy. I was repulsed yet curious. That truly was the worst scene in the movie. I was fearing for the monkey, but it wasn't that bad compared to the turtle. Yeah. What about the woman on the pike? You know. Uh, you well, know, that was fake, okay. though. That was fake, though. So <laughs> that's we that's hope. true. That's yeah. true. The other ones were real. I don't think I will be seeking other cannibal movies out anytime soon, but agree it's an important film in horror history. Mm -hmm. Crystal's cavalier attitude towards the film made me chuckle. I re-listened <laughs> to the podcast after I re-listened to the podcast after I watched the film and enjoyed it even more. Crystal is scary though. <laughs> yeah, there's something wrong with Crystal. Terrifying. <laughs> if you don't know that by now, you know. Yeah. Uh, Crystal's sick. Crystal's yeah, yeah, that's true. yeah. I, I wanna episode. refute that, but I can't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we love you anyway. Yeah, we love yeah. you. Well, that's oh funny. no. It's true. Thanks Tyler's for the great wise. episode and uh, probably convincing fans to broaden their horizons for broaden their horizons for better or worse. Cheers, Tyler. Yeah. Thanks, I'm glad you worse. watched it. I'm like yeah, proud yeah. of you because because I do I think there's really lots of people. You. Yeah, I think lots of people fear Cannibal Holocaust, mm -hmm. and I think sometimes your imagination can be worse though than what yeah. it actually was. Yeah, and so I hope. In some regard, I think that's true. But yeah, the turtle scene is. I would yeah. agree with him that it's very intense. Though. Yes, oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the way I mean, act and the way they, yeah, it's it's not. I think I think it's a great too. movie. I think it's an essential movie. I, it's not a movie that I would insist people watch because oh, no. of what it is. But if you can, yeah, it's unique. It, it, mm -hmm. it did exactly what it meant to do and did it well. But I totally understand. But listen, I've never seen a Serbian film, and I don't think I ever will see oh. it. And I understand mm -hmm. it's a very well-made film. I just don't, I, given the subject matter, I'm not saying this makes me better or worse than anyone. I just don't think I could enjoy it knowing <laughs> what I know about it. Yeah. I'm not going in blind. So, you know, there are films like that, and, you know, you just make a choice on that. And there's no wrong choice. But I'm glad you, I'm glad you endured it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and thanks for uh, writing in, Tyler. Appreciate it. Yeah. That. Yes, sir. The good story stuff. And the time it took to do that. And, yeah, uh, that was a good, listening. well thought out. All right. Uh, so the next one is on episode 201 on Chopping Mall. And this is from Evil Genius, ah, who evil used genius. to be known as Evil. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, he, went to, he went to grad school and now he's Evil Genius. Nice. Yeah, Congratulations. so you guys... <laughs> You guys need to help me out here because I can't figure it out. Let's, uh, Chad, I'll just go around the horn. Chad, could you uh, take this one? Sure. This is from Evil Genius. Okay, Jeff, so you may have noticed that I changed my name a bit. I did it to give you a clue on who my icon is and where it is from. You've been trying to figure it out, and I hope that helps. Wait, I wish I okay. could see his icon. Yeah. Darn it. Like well, it, it's know. it's kind of weird, and it didn't. I didn't recognize it. You know, if hmm. you go to YouTube, I I think he's just talking about his avatar, maybe or his, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, hmm. uh -huh. um, yeah. Okay, so we'll have to, we'll hmm. have to check it out. I yeah. didn't know who it was, so Shoot. I'm thinking Wiley e. Coyote, kind of evil genius. Or something. <laughs> yeah, evil it's genius. Like, yeah. super genius. And he goes on. Anyway, now on to catching up on my comments. I hate being away when you like hit the movies like Halloween two that I've been mm -hmm. waiting for. It's my punishment though for being away, I accept it. As a former mall employee as well, I do have to concur that mall security was not the cutting edge. <laughs> First shift security was for the retirees who had coffee cups sewn to their hands like in Guns Akimbo. Oh, Guns Akimbo, <laughs> nice. so good. That's such I a good movie. I get that reference. Yes. Yeah. Second shift was for the hot shots who were more interested in ladies and trying to, than trying out for the police exam interesting third shift was for the guys who were more interested in listening to art bell coast to coast am rather than patrolling the parking lot well uh, yeah i can't blame them there yeah can't Ooh. blame them there i love art bell 
I should know because as the third shift operations supervisor, I hung with them. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Nowhere in, in there are death robots of any kind. Honestly, though, I wish we did have them. Would have made the job far easier. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Like, yeah. Appreciate Thanks, it, evil. EG. <laughs> I, evil and evil. I, I hope you uh, still were able to catch up on, yeah, some of the... Oh, he's got Halloween. some more. Oh, okay. He's got some more. Oh, I so see. I see. We're scrolling through the thing. So, okay. Next one is... Uh, well, I just lost something here. Dreamscape. Next one is Dreamscape. Um, and oh, Evil yeah. Genius again. So, uh, who was... I'll I guess if I just one. go I'll around, do Bill, yeah. Bill would oh, do the Bill's, next one. And then okay, just... I just saw my name. I'm like, there's my name. Oh, oh Crystal's in this? All right. Oh, I know. Okay. From Evil Genius, a.k.a. Genius. The scene that always catches in my mind from this movie are the scenes on the rooftop of that building. I love the imagery of the clouds just flowing by. That always stuck with me, yeah. Mm -hmm. But every time I watch this movie, I keep on wondering to myself, where is Nurse Ratchet? Isn't she in this movie? But then I remember, oh, yeah, that was Brainstorm. Another great movie. <laughs> Those two movies were so similar. And did I hear Crystal say, it's just a flesh wound, and then connect that quote with European vacation? That was Monty Python, the Holy Grail, my good lady. My nerd heart took a shot with a sledgehammer. I'm not sure if it was in this one or in Chopping Mall. I listened at work and then commented at home. Actually, okay, I'll go wait, even it further wasn't... back. It was in... It was in um, Little Abner. It was Fearless Fostics. Um, okay. But, <laughs> but, but, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Eric Idle did say it in European Vacation. That's, that's true. That's absolutely fact. And I'm sorry. I'm a little bit young. Er. Yeah, so ish. Monty Python was a little. I did watch it. but And I love Monty Python. Don't get me wrong. But what sticks to my mind is European Vacation. Yeah. But you got to understand, Crystal, the guys yeah. on third shift reenacted that movie every single night. <laughs> yeah. And I know that because I, yeah. Okay. See, but, I, but, but he but did see, say but, it. He did say it. So it's okay, not like but, I was wrong. Yes, okay. No, you're not wrong. And I, could, yeah. I couldn't wrong. argue with you when you when you said it because I, I thought. It's when he they uh, kept hitting him with the car. And he was making okay. a reference to Monty Python. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But yes. but they hit him. He, and, and he's like spewing blood. And he's like, oh, it's He's being so blood. polite because he's yeah. English. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Doesn't That's sorry. I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry if I let you down. But, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. You hit his heart with a sledgehammer. Yeah. Ouch. That's like a country western song right there. Nope. Okay. So now episode two oh three, Howling Two. Your sister is a werewolf. Oh, it's only right Crystal read this one. She's responsible for us doing that mess. Let's make another country song out of this one. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right. Just wanted to chime in with the point that in The Man with the Golden Gun, Christopher Lee also at la acted alongside a little person, Nick Knack, who is played by Herv... Hervé Villages. Hervé Hervé Villages? Yeah. Villages? Okay. Yeah. Hey, that's actually... The Plains. The Plains. That guy. Oh. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Oh. Oh, cool. Aw. They, now, didn't they just make a movie about him with um, Peter Dinklage playing playing him? Did they? Uh, oh, that's maybe. interesting. I, I think there was some controversy. Yeah, there was a movie. or Yeah, there was a, there was a, a controversy because people got upset that Peter Dinklage was playing not... someone who was Filipino. And then it had to be pointed out that uh, Hervé was not, in fact, Filipino, you idiots. Just wah, try to wah, get it right. Yeah. He was French. Okay. That's okay. funny, actually. Yeah, yeah, I gotta love those people. We're up to Halloween 2. Uh, Chad, we've got one from Lone Wolf. Okay. Lone Wolf says, Did you guys notice the way Michael Myers was walking down the hospital stairs while going after Lori? Not sure if this is true, but Dick Warlock said he never looked down the entire time. He apparently memorized the steps during rehearsal. It was supposed to give give add an extra inhuman element to the Myers character. Mm. My favorite kill in the film was nurse Janet getting a needle through her temple. The whole setup felt very giallo to me. Halloween two isn't as good as the original, but at least it gave us a direct continuation of the story, much like Rocky two and jaws two. 
for that, it holds a special place in my heart. Oh. Yeah, I want to. I want to watch that oh, now. To see him know, going down the sweet. stairs, that is yeah. a cool look. Although it's also a good way to watch Michael Myers go ass over tea kettle right down the yeah. stairs. If you're not careful. <laughs> Bring in the next stunt man. <laughs> yeah. 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 You don't want to see him like pulling his mask down and looking down, yeah. 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 or holding onto the handrail. You don't want <laughs> yeah, Michael Myers no, no, holding that's... onto the handrail. That okay. would actually well, this be one, hilarious. Uh, is from Donnie Salvo uh, from the Facebook group. Also on Halloween too, Bill. Did you take that one? Donnie Salvo. Wow, a normal name for once. This one is one of my favorite sequels. I love how it takes place right after the original. The kills are all great. I love the hot tub scene. I didn't know that they had a relax your muscles setting and a boil a ham setting. LOL. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty funny. <laughs> I also didn't know about the nurse shortage of the early 80s. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> what was there? Ten people in that entire hospital? I know it has its flaws, but unlike Bill, I'm a fan of the Halloween franchise. And out of all the Halloween twos, this one is my favorite. Yep. Fair oh, enough. good. It's nice out to hear someone. Halloween twos. I, I definitely would go along with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the number right, one yeah. Halloween two. <laughs> yeah. We have a we have a bunch on uh, Life Force, episode uh, 206. No surprise. Uh, the first one is from Brian Clark. Crystal? Okay. If you think the movie is convoluted, Colin Wilson's novel is much weirder. Ooh. Oh, hmm. I need to read that. Oh, thank you. Because, I yeah, okay. Packed with even more psychosexual nonsense. His primary focus was writing nonfiction on sex and the occult. That's actually fat. Okay. And adding elements from Clark Ashton Smith and even M.R. James. Okay. I'm sold. I'm, I got to check right. that out. Yeah. Oh, John. Oh, sorry. Keep going. Okay. John Deekstra was in charge of the visual effects and miniature work with Nick Malley in charge of special makeup effects, the zombies and the bats. Nick, whose biggest claim to fame was building Yoda. Wow. Hmm. Wow. Said he got along great with Toby Hopper, Hooper, Hopper, whatever. I'm feeling <laughs> stupid right now. You're doing and, stranger things now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and had a great deal of fun coming up with all the different gags. Like the one zombie pushing, uh, the one zombie rushing the bars of its cell and exploding all over the home That secretary. was so awesome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a fantastic interview with him coming out in a future issue of Scream Magazine. That's oh, awesome. Sweet. And, and Life Force was the main focus of our discussion. Wait till you see the behind the scenes photos he gave us. Oh, that's ah, cool. awesome. Look forward Definitely to that. Definitely check that out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so Brian. Scream Magazine is pretty cool. Brian, besides being a uh, uh, horror movie uh, super aficionado and kaiju fan, is a, also mm. a writer. Um, Yay. That's wonderful. All right. Then we have one from uh, Mike, Mike Z. The Z man. <laughs> he actually says something later on here about that. He, li he likes that. He likes it. Okay, so, good. Um, where are we at? Chad. Uh, Mike Zass is, says the first half is great. After the body swapping plot point, it becomes overkill from the performances of the effects. To the effects mm -hmm. off the rails bonkers to the very rush no time to think about it ending yeah well okay mike <laughs> jack well okay well that's <laughs> fair i still love it but that's fair okay i gotta read the next one because i'm responsible yeah, and for this, yeah. and it's a it's a jerry chandler book this is it's like a jerry i i swear this is uh this holy is like cow <laughs> me 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 this me me like nah, 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 nah. get, get like some lozenges in here for yeah. read. Let me do my... Uh, uh, when he's arguing with somebody. Why so. would I want to sold to the America? All right. One thing that makes her performance in the film more amazing is apparently Mathilda May spoke very little English when they filmed this. She learned many of her lines phonetically and only started mastering English toward the latter half of the shoot. I think the issue with Steve Railback's character is the nature of the script and the editing. You find out that he's essentially under the influence of his contact with the aliens the entire time we see him on Earth. He's erratic and troubled, but we have very little to compare that to in order to understand that's why he's acting the way he is. And moviegoers had even less reason to understand it since so much of the alien ship footage was cut from the theatrical release. I think we're meant to understand that something is now wrong with him, but it's only barely shown that he isn't this way all the time. Bill, seriously? They pulled the iron bit out of their backside, 400 ways to kill a vampire in one tome, and none of them are iron. 
As the character said, it goes back to the old legends, an iron rod into the solar plexus. Since the book was written by an English writer who may have been more familiar with older legends, but that was a traditional enemy of vampires and the old legends going all the way back to the Romanian myths and the lands around uh, Hoi Basiu. And that's where you stuck the buggers. Hell, one traditional way to keep a, a new vampire from rising if you feared the departed was going to return was sinking iron rods into the ground above the grave so the vampire would impale and weaken itself trying to rise. Bill, you probably remember Aubrey Morris in a Hammer film from when you were working on Blood of the Mummy if you were bringing such films as visual research for your effects works. He had a role in Blood of from the Mummy's Tomb, the one starring Andrew Keir and Valerie Leone. I love this film. It makes no sense, but it's a bat guano crazy acid trip on film and high energy throughout. It carries you along so fast you probably don't have time to think about during much of it. And as I mentioned when you announced it and you mentioned it here, it starts feeling like a modern take on the damn it. He always puts this in here. Uh, Quatermass, Quatermass film, and I think the, that mm -hmm. feeling of familiarity makes you want to like it more than you otherwise might. I really wish this had been a film from a better studio than Canon. I think a better studio would have kept the production quality up and maybe kept a better control on excess spending and losing scenes to lost budget. The storyline may have survived a little better and the marketing would have been way better. I think the only three films Canon ever made that really stand the test of time were Othello, Runaway Train, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. But I still love this film despite its flaws. It's just so damn fun to watch and not just for the reason most guys will think of. <laughs> The crazy high energy and the pounding score by Henry Mancini combined with the over-the-top scenery chewing performances and the amazing effects work on a number of scenes just make it sound like a wonderful, enjoyable mess. This is revenge for not inviting him on the show when we did this. <laughs> Seriously, if you haven't watched it, go take a look at the Electric Boogaloo, the wild untold story of Canon Films. It touches on the money issues of all the films you mentioned as well as numerous other issues Canon had and a pretty fun, if not always super informative, look at their rise and fall. It does have a nice section devoted to Hooper's films. And throw Bill a Scooby snack or two for finally mostly getting uh, Quatermass correct after all these decades. And I know I just screwed it up again. So, you know. No, you Thank you, Jerry. Kudos to Bill for an, yet another fine yeah. cast Thank Jerry you. Chandler Thank reading. You. Mm -hmm. ah. You're the best at it. Like You're the it. best at it, Bill. Well, that was... <laughs> I've been arguing with Jerry for so long, I understand the cadence of how he writes, so it's easier. As, as you're reading that, I'm thinking, I think I remember Bill saying, all you have to do is mention life works and then step back and let <laughs> Jerry just <laughs> yep. Yeah. So this is probably revenge. Okay, so we have a couple from uh, 2000, or uh, uh, Vamp. 207. Yay. We're almost done. Vamp, wow. Uh, episode mm -hmm. 207. Um which just came out on Monday. Came out two oh, days yay. ago. Oh, yeah, goody. Uh, first one is from Kayla Nan, a longtime listener and a uh, uh, good friend. So, Crystal, you want to Viking mom. Yes. Mm. Yes. Okay. This is one of my favorite vampire movies of all time. I totally agree. This woman is timeless, amazing, and she's just downright wild. I love it, love it, love it. I do, too. I'm so glad. I watched it at least once a year. It's one of those films. Yes. She deeply inspired me as a little girl from her working Conan to this and mm. all of her other strange pro projects, also being a fashion icon. Keith Haring also built and designed the sculpture she dances on. Yes, I, I to I'm totally with you, Kayla. Like it, she's just, she's art. Like mm. Mm. she's just art. She's just wonderful. Amazing. Yep. Can we keep, okay, Mike, ah, uh, Mike easy. Okay, Grace Jones, though silent, commands the film and you cannot stop looking at her no matter what guys she is exhibiting. True. Her strip act is something to behold right to the last overt sexual act. The mm. film always seemed uneven in tone to me. It didn't know if it wanted to be an out and out comedy or so, or so 80s horror. At times, it felt like Fright Night meets Adventures in Babysitting. Hmm. I can kind of see that. Yeah. I thought the makeup was eh, except for the attack on AJ, which I thought was the direction, which I thought was the direction the rest of the film was going. The rest of the cast was okay. Great to see Billy Drago, I know, as an albino menace. I love him. Hmm. Um, like Bill, I didn't get that the girl in the eatery had bad dental issues and was not exhibiting vampiric teeth. Really? They were like Bubba teeth. Mike, they were like Bubba teeth. Okay. Great, 
podcast again, uh, Grew Crew. By the way, Crystal, some of my f- friends do address me as Mikey Z. I can't, I can't do it <laughs> without that. I was, <laughs> I was honored to have you mention my other moniker. Yay. Now get the Grew Crew van together and let's go to Vegas for real though. There are a lot of visitors there who won't be missed. Hmm. Ah. Oh. Mm-hmm. I know Doc would be would he's like Vegas, Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, great. I, I I don't know. I can thank everybody. Kayla. Yeah. Uh, Mike Zat, Jerry Chandler, Brian Clark. Um, evil genius. Evil yeah, genius. Evil. Tyler Moore. I think Lone I'm getting Wolf. everybody. If I miss anybody, I apologize. Lone Wolf. I think we mm-hmm. Salvo. Or so. mm-hmm. uh, Donnie Salvo. Good and job. I pulled these from yeah. one of them was an email to feedback at Gruesome Magazine. One was uh, a couple were on the Facebook group um, and a bunch were on the uh, YouTube. There's a million content. ways to contact us. Yeah, for real, though. And uh, it's easiest for me to pull stuff from the uh, YouTube comments, but you should do it on what's easiest for you. And I'll try to find them. And you too can um, be as much a part of the show as Gizzy the Wonder Cat. Aww. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's wow. it for this episode. But every two weeks, we'll be focusing on a specific film released between 1980 and 1989. Next up, we tackle one chosen by me. Oh. Uh oh. Since we're in the mood for watching movies that make no sense but are visually Uh-oh. gobsmacking, Lucio Fulci's The House oh. by the Cemetery. Okay. Yes. yes. The third and in the currently on of Shutter trilogy. and Tubi. If you want to watch that to uh, prepare, make sure you join mm-hmm. us for that one. Uh, plenty of ways to stay in touch. Please send feedback to the places I said feedback at groosemagazine.com. Leave comments on YouTube. Like, subscribe, alerts. Well, yeah. Listen, share with a friend, you know. Uh, if you want. Or go to the website, groosemagazine.com or the Facebook group. Um, Grusom Magazine's H and R D O H podcast Facebook group. It's too long. Mm. Uh, so catch us again here in two weeks for another great horror movie of the 1980s, as only decades of horror can do it. Yep. Say good night. Good night. Get out of here. <laughs>